السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته قال الله تبارك وتعالى في الكلام المجيد والفرخان الحميد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ان الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا اي الذين امنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى ال محمد ما صلى على بارك على ال محمد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى ال محمد ما بارك على بارك على ال محمد مجيد اوه من الشيطان رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, we are gathered here and it is, I am so pleased and to welcome you all here. Uh, one of the hadiths, Rasulullah said that when people gather together for the sake of deen and to understand Quran, then the malaika cover them. and the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends them. And for the angels who are looking after where shall we go from far away, these places where there is zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Quran, it shines like stars to them. So they say this is something important, let us go there. And they cover and the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes in. So Alhamdulillah, this is one of the gatherings and Make sure that your niyyah is always has to be to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the most important thing. The, uh, apart from the niyyah, to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there should not be anything at all. Now, first of all, they said that there is to be introduction of the speaker. So who should be giving this? So I said, myself will be the best person to introduce myself. You know, underneath your feet is your shoes and underneath the shoes is the dust. So my position is below the dust of your shoes. This is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala likes to be humble because to be proud is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If anybody is proud, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he is challenging me because I am the only one. to be proud. Apart from me, there is nobody. Can I ask a question? Because I would like to be this an interactive thing. Which was the first sin committed on Arsh? Hmm? On Arsh. First sin committed on Arsh. The first sin committed is disobedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to perform sajda. And what was the second sin? No. Second thing is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, you made a mistake, he argued with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The first of all is to stick to his point and not to repent. That's the second sin. Then Adam al Islam is a different thing. So this is very, very important for us to remember that Shaitan is the one who was responsible for the first sin on Arsh and after that he stick to his point. Can you imagine somebody who, who can argue with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is his creator. He knows the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He has seen the angels and he has seen everything. Apart from that, he still want to argue with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what was the reason he said? Ana khairum minhu. I am better than him. So this is very important point for us to remember. The trap of shaitan is to think, make you think that you are better than others. So the moment that thought comes, think that this is from shaitan. I am not better. I am not better. It's only if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it better, it is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not from me. Harun, when he was rich and he had so much richness that the keys to his 
places where he put his money will be carried by not one but several of the camels and he used to boast i am wealthy and rich because of my thinking that's why allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't like and the people said that oh we wish we were like harun but very soon allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forced him into the earth and then the people who were telling that oh we wish we could be like harun suddenly said oh allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we are happy that you did not make us like harun this is very important part now the thing is that i sometimes repeat things and the people who were in the juma last no before last i mention about al quran al kareem so i will be repeating something this repetition is very important because our memory now in the computer language you know what memory is and it has got a capacity we see things we learn things we talk this comes into our memory but at a certain time the if the memory is loaded then there are certain things the memory try to erase so that's why we say oh i think that happened but just slip in my mind because that has gone out of your memory so for that repetition is very important the more you repeat the memory thinks this is something important that's why people who want to memorize quran what they have to do repeat it repeat it repeat it and for us anything important we have to repeat it so that our memory says that this is something important to be remembered not to be erased this is very important now al quran al kareem i mentioned in the jumma khutbah that when we buy any equipment open the box it comes a book that's called a handbook and that shows everything about this equipment because this is written by the manufacturer who knows who prepared this one who assembled this one and he knows how this thing works how to avoid damage and how to make sure how it performs well and this is i change the words about manufacturer and the stuff that the creator of us allah subhanahu wa taala he knows us he has created us and he has given this handbook called al quran al kareem gives everything about us how we should spend our life things to avoid things to do and how we can be the best person on this earth this is the message of al quran al kareem second thing i mentioned is about when the prophets came they were given a book of guidance of that time adam al salam was given and ibrahim al salam was given noah al salam was given Musa alayhi salam was given Isa alayhi salam was given Daud alayhi salam was given names of books are there the book Torah Injil or Quran Karim Sufi so Ibrahim we say so they were the laws and sharia of that time the smaller the community the smaller laws the community expanded the laws expanded my teacher explained how the sharia is that it is like a garment cloth when a when a child is born it is a small size as the child grows a bigger size cloth and further grows a bigger size but when the person is adult that is a complete size after that the same size is going to continue size is is small size medium large whatever it is that is going to be there so when the humanity was starting from the beginning adam al islam it was a smaller sharia as it grows up and up and up come to the peak that is muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam so now the sharia is complete there is no not going to be any changes in the sharia so this is very important point for us to remember that the sharia is going to continue and this book is going to continue but at the same time with the prophets what happened is when they presented people wanted to check the with them what they are saying is right or wrong and for that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them mujizat miracles and the miracles were there for people to understand what they are doing this road we know all the prophets who had all the miracles and so on and so forth musa alaihi salam had isa alaihi salam had 
Dawud al Islam had the war. Sulaiman al Islam had both mujizat, control over all the birds and animals and so on and so forth. And the air, he used to travel from here to there. So these were the mujizat of different prophets. But they were given the sharia. But when Ar Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa came, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala joined them together. The sharia is one and the mujiza is one. So this is sharia and this is mujiza. And the beauty is that with other prophets, when they came, their mujiza were for their time. Musa al-Islam had the asadi stick. When Musa al-Islam passed away, the stick was there. When anybody wants to throw, nothing happens. So the mujiza were allowed alive at the time of the prophets. But when the prophets went away, their mujizas finished. But with Ar Rasul Sallallahu this is the living mujiza. This is from the time of revelation till the end of this world, this mujiza is going to continue. And in various hadiths, it says that from time to time, people are going to discover new things from Al Quran and Kareem. As the time, as the science develops, we are going to learn more and more and more <laughs> and understand Al Quran Al Kareem. The Mufassirin of early times, they understood the Quran, but according to their scientific knowledge, they explained what these ayah means. Like I'm going to just give you an example of the last ayah of Surah Al Luqman. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that there are five things only Allah knows. One is what is coming from the sky. What is in the womb of your mother? What you are going to do tomorrow? When the day of judgment is going to come? Where you are going to die? These are the five things nobody knows except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But at the time of the Mufassirin, earlier times, they didn't know about all these things. So they, that means that when the rain is going to come, only Allah knows, nobody knows. And what is in the womb of the mother? Is it a boy or a girl? Only Allah knows, nobody knows. So their explanation was for their time. But now when the development grows up, it is started saying that no, what comes from the sky is something. Any calamity is coming, something beneficial is coming from the sky. That's it. What is in the womb? Nobody knows if this child is going to be a virtuous child or a person who is going to revolt going to cause problems to the humanity or be going to bring rahma and baraka to the humanity. So this is the differences I'm seeing. So this is the background of how the Quran is going to be alive and every time as time passes by we are going to understand Quran in details and scientific development comes and the Quran is going to put the seal that what the science has developed now the Quran mentioned 1400 years ago. And now we are going to check and see that's right. So this is Al-Quran al karim And one more point I want to mention before we proceed is, this is, says, Kalamul Muluk, Mulukul Kalam. The speech of kings is the king of speeches. So the Al-Quran al karim is the king of his speech. Speech of the kings and not only king but the emperor of emperors. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's kalam. Can we go for the next slide? This is our plan of Al Quran Al Karim. How we should proceed again ahead with recitation of from next time onwards, next Sunday onwards. This is our plan is to be one thing is that we are all learners and we are all teachers okay so there is no teacher going to teach but we are all going to be learners and we are going to be teachers because we are going to go, go into circle make a circle and each one of us is going to go through the recitation and word by word translation one thing is to learn the arabic language and then understand the Quran, that's very good. But for us, if it is difficult to go through and learning exactly the whole Arabic language, but even if somebody learns the Arabic language, the Quranic meaning is going to be a different thing. Because um, Imam Raghib Asfahani has written two volumes, 
explain al mufradatul quran and he explains what is this word in quran means exactly because according to arabic language this might be the meaning but in quran in this ayah this word means this so even after understanding and learning all the arabic language then you have to concentrate what it means in al quran al karim so you have to refer to mufradatul quran to check what this word means in quran now this is most important thing to remember and then we go through the tafsir of the ayah and one hadith we are going to read with the commentary to explanation because sometimes if you just read the hadith we don't know the commentary for the commentary you have to find out and imam bukhari has written sahih bukhari and explanation comes fatahul bari is written sahih bukhari is written in three volumes okay and fatahul bari is written in nine volumes to explain what the hadith of sahih bukhari says because it's like as i have al quran we 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 go through and say there is a shan in nuzul why this ayah was revealed what was the background and fatahul bari they say that what is the background when rasulullah sallam spoke this hadith because now we are just reading the hadith it says so on and so on and so forth but in fatahul bari he explains what was the situation what things happened when people ask question and rasulullah sallam explain so you know the background also of hadith so we are going to do one hadith and then one of the masnoon dua we are going to recite and also memorize that will be like an homework for the next sunday to come we'll conclude at what of the lessons and start the homework the following week can go for the next week there is allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking us this is a wish a warning for us in al quran al karim he says auz billahi minash shaitani rajeem bismillahir rahmanir rahim afala yatadabburun al quran am ala qulubi aqfaluha and there's translation given by so many but i'm just going to you can read them out then do they not reflect upon the quran or are their locks upon their so if this question is asked are we prepared to answer on the day of judgment because we had the time how we spend the time the most important thing was sent from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to us we have faith and belief in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we have faith and belief that al quran al karim is his book sent to us and how much we concentrated our of our lifetime given to us at this did we read understand and how did we manage al quran al karim has got several rights one is to recite it the second is to understand it the third is to have faith and belief in it the fourth is to practice it and the fifth is to spread it are we doing the same thing or not if not think think and see what what is missed go to the next one now this is a complaint from ar rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam to allah in regard to us auz billahi minash shaitani wa qala ar rasul ya rabbi inna qaumi taqazu hadha al quran mahjura and the messenger has said oh my lord indeed my people have taken this quran as a thing abandoned because they haven't got time to concentrate on they have they are already busy with so many activities going on in the world they haven't got time to concentrate or understand and do things so there are so many usefully has said that the messenger will say oh my lord truly my people <coughs> took the quran for just foolish nonsense now billah because what is foolish nonsense is uh, this is we are not going to gain anything so it's a waste of time spending time in al quran we have got various things where we can get benefit and success from time to time next one this is a hadith i'll give you the translation the feet of the son of the adam and this is in sahih tirmidhi 
will not move from the place the person is standing on the day of judgment. It's like a magnet. You won't be able to raise your foot from where you are standing till everybody has answered five questions. How did you spend your life? How did you spend your youth? How did you earn your money? How did you spend your money? And how much did you act upon the knowledge you gained? So there are two questions now we have to answer about Al-Quran al kareem How did you spend your life? How much part of your time in the world you dedicated to Al-Quran al kareem Okay? And this is very, very important for youth, young people. Coming to the old age, you can say, well, my span of life is almost complete now. But the youth have got energy. They can do so many things. They can be healthy and resist and do lots and lots of things. So the two questions about how did you spend your life and how did you spend your youth? These, because that's why I showed the two ayah of Al-Quran al kareem One is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One is a question from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One is a complaint from Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this hadith is notifying us, shaking us. What are you doing? Are you not prepared? Or do you, do you think that you are not going to be standing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment? This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling Rasul Salam to tell people. This is the last ayah of our Surah Al Kahf. We read every Friday, and this, is, and this is going to be that's whenever a person is going to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that come when you are going to meet me, do righteous deed. Most important thing is do not have partners with me. Shirk, shirk, shirk. Very important. Do you know which is the highest sin on earth? Shirk. Inna shirka la zulmun azim. This is in Surah Al Luqman. Inshallah, we are going to come to this ayah in one of the lessons going on downstairs. Luqman tells his son, My son, the highest sin on earth is shirk. And this is the most hated thing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that I can forgive everything you have done on earth except shirk. Except shirk. He can forgive any sin we have done. Except shirk. Shirk is something Allah says in Inna Allah la yakfur an yashirka bi wa yakfur ma duna zalika liman yasha. In Surah Al Nisa Allah says that I can, I might forgive any sin you have done except shirk. So this is very, very important. What is shirk? Inshallah, some other time when time comes, I'll ex- give an explanation of shirk. Next one. This is one thing to remember. And when I mention about Al Quran Al Karim's speciality, Compared to all the books and the Sufi given, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never, never said that I am going to preserve this Sharia. Except for Al Quran al Kareem. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that, Inna nahnu nazzalna zikra wa inna lahu lahafizun. This is the only book I guarantee that I am going to preserve. Is authenticity. So this is the only book preserved. Now with the computer language, what happens is antivirus, virus. So this is the only book. You don't need antivirus. This is protected. But as far as we are concerned, when we are going to recite the Quran Karim, we need antivirus. And this is the antivirus. Is that Auzubillahimineshaitan. فَإِذَا قَرَأْتَ الْقُرْآنَ فَاسْتَعِذْ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ Whenever you want to recite Al-Quran Al-Kareem, take the protection from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the shaitan's evil.
because he is going to if you do without saying auzu billahi minash shaitani rajeem from the recitation and the meaning he is going to misguide you can we go to the ayah before uh, surah al kahf qul innama ana bashar mislukum auzu billahi minash shaitani rajeem bismillahir rahmanir rahim qul innama ana bashar mislukum say verily i am a human being like you shall i tell you what happened innama is verily but if you cut in two part if you say inna separate and ma separate completely change meaning inna means verily ma means no when rasulullah sallam was given the wahi from jibril sallam what what did the reply of rasul sallam was there ma ana bi khari i am not the one who recite so ma meaning of ma is no khul inna say verily ma inna ma separate not a human being can you see the difference now khul inna ma is different khul inna ma if you separate it verily i am not a human being so that's why i just gave you an example but if you don't take the protection of allah subhanahu wa taala shaitan is going to put things in your mind from the translation you are going through now come back to this. this is again allah subhanahu wa taala saying that when you say auz billahi minash shaitani rajeem you come under the protection of allah subhanahu wa taala then he has got no authority no power on you <coughs> indeed there is for him no authority over those who have believed and rely upon their lord when you take the protection of allah subhanahu wa taala as a gps sometime i go to visit patients and you ring the bell there's a dog barking so if they open the door suddenly the dog can jump on you so before they open i said can you please control your dog I said oh, okay doctor come in and when the master forces him he can never attack you nor not come near him. so he is the creator of shaitan when you take the protection of allah subhanahu wa taala shaitan can do no, no harm at all next one auz billahi minash shaitani rajeem ar-rahman allam al-qur'an khalaq al-insan allam al-ba'd this is the four years my teacher dr isra rahmat he used to give explanation of this isra rahmat another student is dr abdus sami very famous for us but you may not know him but you know dr abdus sami's student he is very well known usna ustad naman ali khan he is the student of abdus sami and abdus sami is a student of isra rahman so isra rahman sahab i used to be a student he, he used to can i just tell you tafsir of surah al asr dr isra rahman have done three hours cassette and 10 cases 30 hours of tafsir of surah al asr if you have time i am giving to give you you can go through and he used to i used to receive khutba every friday of dr islamat does the khutba every friday i used to receive this cassette of his khutba mashallah so surah rahman verses he said that allah subhanahu wa taala choose and four things ar rahman is the name of allah subhanahu wa taala and that is the highest and best name of allah subhanahu wa taala for us because what happens rahman is the one who forgives even if you are disobedient if when you are laugh at allah subhanahu wa taala if even if you commit all sins and never repent ar rahman is the one who is still going to give you give you give you all the people who don't believe in allah do all sorts of bad deeds still he is giving them life health providing all the things they need in this world this is rahman so is dr sam sab the best and the highest and superior name for us of allah subhanahu wa taala is rahman 
because we need Rahman, because we might be doing all sorts of activities which can be punishable, but Rahman is the one who forgives and gives us. And what he did, Khalaq al Insan, he has created everything, but the highest of his creation is the human being, even above the angels, because that's why they, they prove it. So, Ar Rahman, the highest name for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for us, is our superlative. Khalaq al Insan, the highest creation. And what is the highest important point in the human being? Is his sense, brain, and communication. You, you see, all the it's very strong animal, but they cannot communicate. They haven't got the brain. But the human being, not very strong, not very big, but because of the brain, he can control and have superiority on all the creations. So the Rahman is the highest. Highest of the creation is human being. And highest point of importance in human beings is brain and communication. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given this highest point of communication, it has to be used in communicating and learning Quran. So the four important points are Rahman, I'll say that Khalaq al Insan, Allamahu al Bayan, Allamahu al Quran. The next slide. And this is supported with this hadith. This is in Sahih Bukhari. Khairukum an ta'allam al-Qur'an wa allama. The best among you. In, in Arabic language, if you say khairum min who? He is better than this. Khairukum means the best. There is no comparison. The best among you are the one who learn and teach Qur'an. So that is our aim. Is here not only to learn, but also teach and learn. This is interactive thing, which inshallah we are going to do. <coughs> Next one. This is the hadith of Imam Bukhari. Imam Bukhari, he collected so many hadith. Inshallah, in five minutes or so, we are going to finish. He collected all the hadith. You know, Umar Razi Ta'ala, who is Umar Razi Ta'ala? Father of Ummahat al Mu'minin Hafsa Razi Allah Ta'ala Father in law of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Second Khalif Okay And as Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said Umar walks from the street The shaitan will never go to enter this street And as Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that If there is going to be a prophet after me It would have been Umar And that Umar Razi Allah Ta'ala And the last moment comes his son Abdullah bin Omar puts his head on his lap and he's moving everywhere. And he said, put my head down. He said, what happened? No, put it on the earth. I fear facing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who is Umar radiallahu ta'ala? Ashari Mubashir Rasulullah has guaranteed that he's going to enter paradise. But he's putting his head on the sand and say, I don't know how I am going to face Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the fear of Muradzila ta'ala. So Imam Bukhari, he started collecting all the hadith and then he decided to write it in the form of a book called As-Sahih Bukhari. And he had a thinking which hadith I should start. Looked and looked and looked and then he come to this hadith. This is the only hadith Imam Bukhari says that narrated by 70 of the companions. So can you imagine 70 people were there when Rasulullah said this. And everybody said, we heard from Rasulullah The other hadith, there might be two, three people and they convey to others. So the chain of narration comes that this person heard from this and this to this, this to And this was a present at Rasulullah But for this hadith, there were 70 sahaba. So Imam Bukhari said, this is the hadith I must choose. So he said, I will start this hadith. And out of all the narrators, all the narrators, all of them, he picked up Umar bin Khattab. So he said, he said the Umar bin Khattab heard this hadith and this. Innamal amalu bin niyat. Your whole action depends on your intention. And in the same hadith, it says that 
when the time of hijra came when people moved with rasulullah sallam from makkah to madina the reason was to be with rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam to have freedom of practicing the religion but there was one person one person who loved a woman in madina contacted her and she said that i can't come you come from makkah to madina if you want to get married and this was a woman her name was jamila and she was married before and had a son called khais so her name is umm khais and this person migrated from makkah to madina and this is even after 1400 years is mentioned in this hadith any person who travels and make a hijra according to the near they are going to be rewarded but the person who travels to meet umm khais his niya is going to meet this woman 1400 pass but still the hadith is there ila ma hajara ila and the explanation of this hadith says one person who travel to meet a woman umm khais the one who travels to meet umm khais he has lost the intention of being with rasulullah sallam and lost all the benefits of, of the hijr walamma jaa musa li miqati وكلمه this this is surah al-araf i'm going to give you the background musa alayhi salam used to hear allah subhanahu wa ta'ala his kalim he's listening to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's word and after so and so and so it, there is a thing comes in your heart i'm just hearing not seeing so he said allah subhanahu wa ta'ala i'm all the time hearing you can i see you surah al-araf allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's reply was that he didn't reply no musa i can't show you if he says that is a weakness and also panatal is above all weaknesses he said no musa you won't be able to see me hala ya musa lan tarani you won't be able to see but at the same time allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says there is tajalli my noor okay that is part of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala i am going to drop it on to a mountain in front of you if that one is going to hold then you might have a little bit of glimpse but as soon as the tajalli came what happened the mountain crumbled to dust and pieces this is surah al-araf the next one and as far as al-quran al-karim what is allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying here law anzalna hadha al-qur'ana ala jabalin la raitahu khashiyan mutasaddiyan min qashatillah like tajalli is part of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this alquran alkarim is kalam of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is part of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says if you would have descended is alquran alkarim on the mountain exactly the same thing would have happened which happened in front of musa alayhi salam next one oh bilam this is surah bayyana the last half surah bayyana we love the prophets companions we have this feeling all the time we wish we were in the presence of rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam but it is impossible we can't get that but what title we give to the companions of rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam who have seen rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam with their eyes how we say their name and how the name is ended with radi allah taala anhum that means allah is pleased with them and they are pleased with allah so can i give you a secret now if you want to have that title that title is still open radi allah taala the title is still open and this is allah subhanahu wa taala giving the clue here innal ladina amanu wa amilus salihati ulaika hum khairul bariya jazahum inda rabbihim jannatu adin tajri min tahtil anhar khalidina fiha abada radi allah anhum wa razu an zalika liman qashya rabba if you have the fear like umar radhiyallahu ta'ala had at the time of his death that fear facing allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allah says that when you have that sort of fear and qashya then allah is pleased with you and you will be pleased with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so inshallah have this fear and you can have this title of radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu.
Although we cannot be equivalent to the, the companions, even Rasulullah Sam said that my company companion's position is highest. If people after them come and give in charity the gold equivalent to the amount of ahad, it cannot be equal to what a, a date the companions have given. So we cannot compare to them. But we can try and get this title but developing that khashya. Ashram Mubashara, and I told you so many things about Umar after having all this, the fear he had facing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we should develop that fear that when we die, we are going to face Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is what I'm to The beginning of our, our lesson is Auzu Billah min Shaitani Rajim. This is the translation I told you to seek refuge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from shaitan regime that is stone that thrown out so shaitans does anybody know the name the real name of shaitan Azazil Ibn Kasir Ramatullah alayhi written Al-Badaya wa Naha in nine volumes if you have time go through that and he mentioned that the real name of shaitan is Azazil. And shaitan and iblis are his two qualities. Shaitan comes from the root word shaitanun, who has been thrown out of the company of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And iblis comes from labasa yelbisu, who has lost all the hope of being given for given from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is the holy book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Al-Quran al Karim. Very important book. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never mentioned Azazil. Otherwise it, he would have been honored with his name in Al-Quran al karim Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions only his qualities, shaitan and iblis. So, Auz billahi min shaitan al-rajim. Next one. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim with the name or to start with the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is Rahman and Rahim. These are two qualities of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rahman as I mentioned he is kind to everybody whether you believe or not whether you commit sin or not whether you are doing zulm and calamities and causing troubles in the world is still his Rahman, 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 Rahman. But Rahim is limited to the believers who are virtuous people. The other explanation is Rahman is for the earth and Rahim is for the hereafter. The benefits we are going to get in the Jannah is all because of the quality or sifat of Rahim. And what we are seeing in this world is Rahman. So inshallah, this is the just beginning of Auzu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem, Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Next Sunday we are going to go through Surah Al-Fatiha, the first chapter. And inshallah, in great explanation we can go through. We will be doing the recitation of Surah Al-Fatiha, word by word, translation, and then a small tafsir. I will give the background. If you know, people have spent their lives, their lives, their lives collecting the tafsir and books of tafsir. Ibn Jarir, Ibn Kasir, Imam Fakhruddin Razi has written tafsir al-Kabir. Four volumes only explaining Surah Al-Fatiha. Ruhul Mahani is by Mahmud Alusi, Rahmatullah explaining, giving the tafsir of Al-Quran al-Kareem. 30 volumes, what, one volume for one Jews. Imam Khurtabi has written the tafsir. Tafsir at Jalalain is then. Jalaluddin Mahali is the, stu- the teacher and Jalaluddin Suwitu is his student. So the master did a part of the tafsir and the student completed, but he said it should be called Tafsir at Jalalain. But Jalaluddin Suyuti separately did another tafsir and that's called Durri Mansur by Jalaluddin Suyuti. Imam Zamakhshari has written a tafsir called Tafsir Kashaf. And nowadays we come from Pakistan, or the India, we know Tafimur Kulan by Abul Al Maududi, 
The Dabur al-Quran by Amin Ahsan Islai, nine volumes. Maruf al-Quran by Mufti Muhammad Shafi, five volumes and so on. So they have spent their lives to research, understand and spread the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Their whole life. The person, Ruhul Mahani, Mahmud al has written 30 volumes. Do you know from what age he has done? We don't know. Till the last stage he has done it. So he said, spend all this life. It is not our duty to at least, at least spend time to recite, understand the Quran, and then act upon it. So make a firm commitment that inshallah, 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 our time is going to be spent in understanding so that we are prepared to to face Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment when questions are going to ask. When Rasulullah is going to complain, say that we are not among the ones about whom you are complaining. And to say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are not the ones who are going to say like this. Lastly finishing, can anybody know the last ayah of Al-Quran al kari We know the Ikhra. Ikhra is the first ayah. Everybody knows the first way. The last way. Last way he made. Last way. This is Surah Bakhra. Ayah number is 281. Azubillah ibn Shaitan. Fear the day when you shall all return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When every soul shall be paid in full what it has earned, none shall be wronged. Again, fear Allah on the day of judgment when you are going to. This is the last way he came to Rasulullah And after that, Rasulullah was alive for only few days and he passed away.